people. Mm -hmm. So when I used to do these vinyl toys and I worked with this company called Queer Box, we would try to create like, these pieces that were like a work of art in a way. Yeah. You know, and I wanted it all the way around from design to how it was produced and just put together. But probably the most important of my art figures is Toby. And that's, you know, this dude here. He's kind of right. like, mm -hmm. people don't know what he is. And he's like a cat. I call him a cat. But. And so Toby was created to be like the keeper of your dirty little secrets and to love you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And when I had my exhibition for the love of Toby, it was, um, I had about 35 paintings and a lot of them were about Toby being gifted to another. So he's gift, you're kind of gifting your intimate, most personal self to somebody else. Okay, and, I, and I created him at a time when I needed my own personal Toby. And I wanted to blur the lines between fine art and toy culture. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you feel like there's a market for toys for adults? I guess because your characters seem to be, you know, designed for adults. Okay, well, well this is where people kind of mistaken what I do because okay. it feels like it's kind of commercial, even though I have never created anything for just a commercial, co commercial venture. Mm -hmm. So is there a market? I don't know. Do I really care? I should care because I need to make a living and survive. But there's a need as an artist to create this dialogue. And this is something that, that I'm very um, confident in and, and who I am as an artist. So for me, when I created them, it wasn't for sales. Mm -hmm. It was more like I feel like this is something that needs to be discussed in some weird way. Yeah. This kind of playing off of uh, this um, sense of childhood, this sense of uh, what is an art piece, to question what is an art piece. You know, especially when you deal with coming from uh, growing up with uh, what we call pop art with Warhol and, and Rauschenberg and, you know, and then looking at um, this world within the, in the last 15 years of dealing with pop culture and what does that represent and then also with the blurring of all these mediums and also with the growth of all these new mediums and apps and ways that people communicate what does this what does this all kind of represent so there is I mean then there's a whole other conversation we can even have about is what is art and does art even exist anymore since everyone now tries to brand everything. So it's like, you know, are you a student? Are you a reporter? Are you a branded entity? You know, mm -hmm. so everybody just wants to brand these things, you know, but they basically, and I understand how to, the need to simplify imagery and understand symbology and, um, and things that are icons, and I do that very well. And I've been a professional uh, artist and unprofessional artist, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. for pretty much my whole life. But I feel like uh, artists that they try to um, title, you're a street artist or you're, you know, you're a pop surrealist or whatever horrible, wonderful name people are making up, um, I think it's killing uh, a sense. And then of, of, of trying to put this marketing tool of what art is. It's forcing a new generation to limit themselves in, in a way because they're trying to turn them into this marketed entity. Now, do you ever get people that move when mm -hmm. they're getting their tattoos done? And if so, like, does that really present a problem? Um, you know, <laughs> I can't just... <laughs> to hold them you can just strap them down. <laughs> yeah.